Hi everyone, I'm Ali Grayman and today I wanted to talk to you about how to reduce rumination. Rumination is very um, common part in OCD compulsions. Puro, especially people with uh, puro suffer uh, from rumination. Um, that's kind of their uh, their way of figuring things out, right? Because the, uh, the thought itself is the obsession, right? So their compulsion would be to figure the thought out. So what you can do is... At first, if you're 10 out of 10 OCD, it's really, really hard not to ruminate, pretty much impossible. Then try to delay rumination and push it off until the end of the day. The reason being is if you start to ruminate first thing as soon as you wake up, I know it will push you to start to ruminate first thing when you wake up. But if you actually give in, you're going to be ruminating all day. But if you say, no, I'm going to ruminate after, say, 5 p.m., I'm going to ruminate. Until then, I'm just going to keep busy have a list prepared of things that you need to do it doesn't they don't need to be important things they just need to be things that will sidetrack you to some extent and again the thoughts will still spin all day long it, it just will give you a little bit of uh not like a break but just just a little bit of an easier time to disregard so it will take it from 10 out of 10 ocd to like a nine you know um it, it's not easy you know I, I can't tell you that recovery process is easy because obviously as you know it is not so you delay for most of the day. Now, when the time comes that you feel like you need to ruminate, that you need to figure it out, you feel like you can't hold off any longer, you need to remind yourself that this is one millionth thought or one millionth detail of the thought that you've had You know, on this theme. This is not the first time you had this theme. You've had this for a while now. You went over different aspects, different details, different theme, different sub-themes. You know, maybe you do have different themes. Sometimes people have multiple themes as well. That's very, very common, actually. So remind yourself that this is not the first one. And chances are it's not the last one because it's going to take you a little while to recover. So the brain will go through a few of them as you are going through recovery. Also remind yourself that you have already figured out all the other themes and they turned out to be nothing. So, um, or you don't have proof that they turned out to be something anyways. So if those didn't turn out to be anything and you let those go, why is this one so special? Because it feels real. All the other ones felt real in those moments as well. So that's not an argument. And based on this, so just how I kind of ruminated with you right now, right? Based on this, we are choosing to disregard. So this is kind of how you have to approach the thought when you feel like you need to ruminate. You're not diving into the thought and really trying to figure it out in the details of the thought. You're looking at it objectively. Uh huh. Another OCD thought gives me the urge to react, the urge to figure out, ask, re get reassurance, do some sort of a compulsion. It, that sounds like OCD. What if, or a verse, sometimes people say, well, my thoughts really don't come as a what if, they come as a statement. That's also fine. That, that's also how OCD can happen. It can come as a statement, a question, an image, a feeling. It, it could be anything. So, but it, it's prompting you to figure it out or to do something, to fix it or to figure out if it's true or something like that. So disregarding and based on all of this, that it sounds like OCD, it looks like OCD, it sounds like OCD, we're disregarding based on that. So you are, in this sense, you are doing reassurance, but you're, because you're not diving into doing major reassurance, it is still much, much better than, than to go the other way. Now, try to do this for, say, a week until you start to feel comfortable with this delay. And then at the end of the day, a little bit of reassurance. Then as you kind of on the subconscious start to understand all of those, like that reassurance uh, tape, basically that is playing in your mind all the time, right? That had this thought before, I'm disregarding, had this thought before, I'm disregarding, right? So um, as uh, this becomes kind of autopilot for you, go to the next step and just say it's OCD because you already know when you say it's OCD, you already know, yeah, I, I had this thought before, blah, 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 right? This becomes second nature. So then you say, yep, yeah, OCD, disregarding. And then do that for a few weeks. And then the next step would be to delay and then do nothing. Just continue, continue to delay. This is how you slowly reduce reassurance behaviors. And if in stage one you feel um, right when you start, so when you push, 
um, all day to do delaying and then at the end of the day you feel like well just saying it's OCD is not enough um, I would say say what I what I said right that I this out a million times before but say that if this is going to be very very difficult tomorrow I will do proper reassurance you know with rumination and the whole thing and take a step back at least in this case you'll be taking a step back every two days instead of every day and this can be a stepping stone to then doing three days you know what I mean so it's I'm trying to say is it's not all or nothing you can't go from doing reassurance 24 hours a day to not doing any at all. So there needs to be some kind of give and take with this, you know, but at the same time, keeping in mind that every time you do reassurance, it is a still, still a step back in your recovery. And every time you delay, every time you refuse, it doesn't matter how you refuse as delaying or just refusing entirely. It's a little bit better if you're re refusing entirely because it's a stronger signal to the mind, but either one works. Um, that's a that's a good thing right that's a step forward so it's steps forward versus steps back if all day you pushed forward then you took a step back okay but if you took a step back that sent you on this you know slide all the way down then that's not good right so kind of um really watching the ratio and if it helps if you record it because then you can see um what it actually looks like you know in the course say of a week like how did i actually do and then that helps to push forward I hope you find my videos helpful. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. I do daily videos about all things OCD. If you would like to do one-on-one -on -one recovery program, all the information is on youhaveocd.com. You can sign up from there. And if you do sign up, please uh, try to uh, book, um, if not all the sessions, but at least the first few. So say, for example, if you signed up for a package of, say, 15 sessions, at least book like the first five or something like that, just to make sure you do have the spots uh, that you want in terms of timing. And you can see, uh, I talk to people all around the world, so you can go through um, the schedule and see what uh, is your time zone and how the uh, hours correlate. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.